Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. Permanent occupation is a crime. Occupation is a crime. Occupation is a crime. From Iraq to Palestine. From Iraq to Palestine. Occupation is a crime. Occupation is a crime. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine.
put it uh, not atrocities in our home lab, but the brilliant is fair and resistant and resilient. Our people in the homeland continue to demonstrate day in and day out. Action must manifest in a multitude of ways, including but not limited to student protests, teaching, workshops, discussing the current developments in Palestine and all open forums. Which means, sisters and brothers, especially us as Palestinian youth living in New York and in the United States, it is our responsibility to defend our homeland here, represent our homeland, defend the honor of our troops in Palestine. When we say support our troops, we support the resistance, we support the youth, we support the intifada, we support the struggle. Sisters and brothers, it's not enough sometimes to rally once in a while when we keep much up in our homeland. We must continue to be persistent in our demands for justice and for a free Palestine. Palestine Arabia! forces to kill our brothers and sisters 
they're actually stealing the struggle of the black Amer uh, African Americans in this country using their slogans and their, and their rhetoric to support their terrorism. So make sure today, inshallah, we have a list of great speakers, and mainly Dr. Hatem Bazian, a professor in Berkeley University, and the uh, AMP uh, na chairman of Na'a National. So we'll have him later on, we'll have more speakers, but it's very important, again, number one, please share pictures, statuses, and posts by using hashtag ny 4 palestine number four, ny 4 palestine also, like the Facebook page, NY for Palestine, to stay up to date. Against this demonstration was organized by the community and organized by the pro-Palestine uh, organizations, mainly al Alda, Right to Return Coalition, SJP, uh, and of course, a mechanism for Palestine, and most likely, and, and thanks to the International Action Center for all their support throughout the years. So please, Keep the hype up and let's get ready to show the world that the New Yorkers are standing up for Palestinians and New Yorkers will never let anybody use their name to justify oppression. <laughs> Alright, let's make sure the heroes. We want 48! We want 48! We want 48! Standing in solidarity with our sisters and brothers in Palestine who are rising up yet, yet again to fight against the oppression of the settler colonial state of Israel. While we mourn the loss of life of the 30 plus Palestinians who have been killed since the beginning of the uprising, we stand here today with our heads held high with pride and with honor. A few blocks away, the Zionists have convened to say, and uh, the quote is, no to terrorism. They have 
appropriated the slogan of Black Lives Matter and are claiming that Jewish lives matter. Typical, typical Zionist fashion to appropriate things. Um, I'm going to be very brief. I just want to say that when we talk about the uprising in Palestine, we all have a role to play. Our sisters and brothers in Palestine are on the front lines. And I know that when we sit down and watch the videos that are coming out of Palestine, we feel hopeless. But we're not. It is on us, on each and every one of us, to not only come out into the streets, but we need to continue to mobilize and organize. Because when we see the images coming out of the refugee camps in Lebanon, from Nahr al to Burj al-Barajni to Burj al-Shimali, where Palestinian refugees are protesting, we know that the uprising in Palestine carries not only the future of the West Bank, but also the future of all of the refugees, of all of Palestine. And we cannot see the events that unfold in the West Bank or Gaza or in 48 in isolation, because all of the events have one cause and one root, and that's the Nakba. So when we speak about Palestine, let us not forget that Palestine means all of Palestine. Palestinians in the West Bank, it means Palestinians in 48, it means Palestinians in Gaza, all of the refugees in Jordan, in Lebanon, in Syria, all of the Palestinians in Diaspora. This is what the uprising is for. It is for all Palestinians. In Lebanon, people are pouring into the streets to demand an end to the corruption of our government and an end to the colonial place sectarian system. But we in Lebanon know very well that our future and our liberation cannot exist without the liberation and the freedom of Palestine. Free, free Palestine! 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 Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Empty Zaga, empty Zaga! Empty Zaga! of students and community members who emphasize the need for community organizing. At times we tend to forget that the most important parts of organizing, the most important parts of organizing goes on goes on here in our communities. We need to be out on the front line organizing all the time. Not only when settler colonialists are murdering and massacring our people. We need to be out all the time. But we should have been out on the front line here in New York City organizing, here in the U.S. organizing. But why is it that we're only out when there are settled colonials murdering and massacring our people? Why is it that we're only out when they're murdering our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Why is it that when protect, Operation Protective Edge was going on, we had protests 
lines down in the streets, but now we can only we can only gather up a few blocks of people. Why? We should always be out organizing in our communities, gathering up blocks of people. So I want you guys to say a chant with me, okay? We don't want to stay. We don't want to stay. We want 48. We want 48. We don't want to stay. We don't want to stay. We want 48. We want 48. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. Muslims for Palestine, and next up to speak is the president of the New Jersey chapter, Mr. Simon Kelly. Can you guys please move back? <laughs> alaikum and peace and greetings to everybody. Thank you for coming out on such short notice to counter this Israeli racist apartheid protest just one month away. You know, we came out here with just a couple days notice to show the world and show New York that we will not leave the streets to these racist Israelis. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! And we came out here to support our brothers and sisters that are putting their lives on the, on the line. So we came out here to support an empty father, an empty father, an empty father! An empty father, an empty father! An empty father! That's why they made that Oslo Accords to stop the Intifada, stop the Palestinians. But the, uh, it took a couple of years, but the Palestinians in the West Bank are finally moving. You know, Israel learned the lesson in Gaza that Palestinians cannot be pushed around. And now they're learning the lesson in Jerusalem and the West Bank. Allah Akbar. You know, we come out here in these protests this is a springboard. You know, we're able to organize a thousand people in such short notice. So I want to make sure these protests, we put it into action. So I want to give you some action items. Because if we just come out here to yell and scream in the streets, that's not enough. We need to get organized. We need to start affecting policy in New York, New Jersey. We need to let the politicians know that we are a force to be reckoned with. If we can organize in short, short days, you see, a lot of campaigns, they spend millions and millions of dollars to get a vote. They calculate it to the dollar amount. To get one vote costs a couple of thousand dollars. So our vote is our power. So when you have these little city elections, assembly elections, state elections, you need to go out there and let your voice be heard. So we need to get organized. We can't just come out here and yell, we gotta get organized. We need to let our politicians know. We need to send petitions when they wanna send billions of dollars of our tax money to Israel. We need to let our voices be heard. We need to flood the phone lines in the White House and on the state level. So it's not enough to just come out here, we need to put some action into it. And that is my message. We need to get organized, start getting involved in politics. We need to put an end to these billions of dollars being sent to Palestine. So we have a lot of work here to do. Our Palestinian brothers and sisters are out there putting their lives on the line. The least we can do is out here send petitions, send emails, write letters to our congressmen, our state legislators, and let them know we will not tolerate it anymore. 
So we got to get involved, brothers and sisters. That is my message. This is the springboard to get more involved in politics. We can't stay on the sideline silent anymore. That's not going to get us anywhere. Us as American Muslims for Palestine, we went this April to the Washington, D.C. to meet with our congressmen, our local officials, and let them know to stop sending the billions of dollars to Israel. Stop the settlement. Takbir. So that is my message, whether it's a boring message or not, we've got to start getting involved. When you see those emails, join these petition groups, join the email list, get active. Right? When you say free, free Palestine, free, free Palestine, we want also action behind it. What are you doing to help in that? We want to be just a small part of the ultimate goal, which is a free Palestine. And we have no doubt it's going to be free. We want to be part of that. Thank you for listening. From the river to the sea, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for coming out today on this cold, cold day. We come out because Palestine has many friends all over the world who are protesting today. All over the world, people are chanting Intifada. However, Zionism has many friends around the world too. Right now, the mayor of our city, Mayor de Blasio, is traveling to Israel. We do not support our institutions like the City University of New York inviting people like Ibn and Yahoo and the other Camille David Petraeus and other enemies of the people to come to our city and teach us how to be imperialists, how to be Zionists, how to kill people, how to make war, how to commit genocide. How dare the United States, how dare the media condemn the Palestinian people for resisting when right here at home, Black people are killed every 28 hours. Immigrants are killed at the border. We are stopped and pushed from the streets. They raise our rent. Here in Palestine, our enemies are waging war on us. That is why revolution is the only solution. Say it with me. There is only one solution. There is only one solution. Intifada revolution. Intifada revolution. There is only one solution. There is only one solution. Intifada revolution. Intifada revolution. We are organizing in the City University of New York to liberate CUNY for the people. We are organizing so that one day we will have a university where we have the power to talk about Palestine and support the resistance. Where Zionists will not come to our university and teach their ideas. Where Hillel will not be able to repress SJP and get away with it. We are fighting for power for oppressed people. We are fighting so that every time Israel does what it does, we will come out here and not only will we have thousands, we will have hundreds of thousands of people. Blasio wants to say that New York City supports Israel. Fuck that. We are New York City. And we do not support Israel. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. Thank you for coming out today. Keep chanting so you stay warm. And check out our life.
It's the fight for what is right, a fight for what is just. Our brethren are being massacred and have been doing so since 1948. In these ranks, we have not only Arabs, not only Palestinians, we have Jews, we have Christians, we have Latinos, we have South Asians, we have uh, Americans, all amongst us, together, unified, trying to raise our voice and fight for what is right. Trying to raise awareness to what is happening. Because our own country is half at fault to what is happening in our beloved land of Palestine. We see all these beautiful flags here, the Palestinian flags. The bottom line is these flags are a sign, they're a symbol of what we aim to strive for. One nation under God that's going to protect all religions as it was before the Zionists have come in. Before the terrorist Zionist state of Israel has taken over and took the rights and the liberties of all Palestinians, Christian and Muslim alike, away from them. We have to continue to raise awareness. We have to continue to talk to our politicians, to sign the petition forms, to continue to use our social media, and to continue to use our voices to liberate and to raise awareness to everybody. So with that, we are here together. All titles aside, all organizations aside, humanity is going to unite this, is going to free and liberate Palestine by the rule of the left part of the We will be free. And we're gonna, and now this stands, and this continued effort for amongst us will only show and justify that. As such, continue to learn, continue to tap into the organizational sites to see what's happening next, to see the political realms that are happening next, to see the petitions that are online. Continue to raise awareness, share with your neighbors, whether they're Palestinians or not, raise with your family, with your relatives, have them get the word out. Our word will only be as good as where we get it out to. Everything here will not die. This rally is not about just this rally and ending here. This rally is about raising awareness and continuing this effort forward. We're not here just to shout and scream. We are here to continue to unify together and raise awareness. To stop the Zionists from raising awareness and wrong awareness of what's happening. To justify and show the American relatives and our American friends the reality and the truth. So with that we say, free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Free, free of Aksa! Free, free of Aksa! Free, free of Aksa! Unfortunately, we are standing. 
standing today in a sad moment when we get news from Palestine. Palestinian people are being killed, Jewish people are being stabbed, and everyone is concerned. No one prefers war. No one likes conflict, and nobody enjoys bloodshed. If we are truly concerned about innocent people being killed, then we have to study, we have to understand what is the that there is an occupation taking place in Palestine. Nothing began just today. It didn't start weeks ago. It's already for decades. It's almost a century. We stand here as Jewish people and we condemn this occupation already going on for decades. We condemn this aggression taking place on al aqsa we are standing here, counter-protesting this Israeli march just around the corner. They are marching pro-bloodshed. They are marching pro-war. We are standing here. So sad. And we are, we are doing our best to stop bloodshed from all sides. We are here to promote a free Palestine. We are here to promote what was existing in Palestine prior to 1948, prior to the 1920s. Where is all of this taking place? This is in Jerusalem, the city of peace, the city that should represent peace, the city that did represent peace. Why are we witnessing this bloodshed? Why are we witnessing this conflict? And why are we seeing this war? It's just because of a political movement that came into the region to destroy Palestine, its Muslim inhabitants, its Christian inhabitants, and its Jewish inhabitants. a couple of dozen people here with you today. I was yesterday in front of the White House in Washington, D.C. My colleagues were in Toronto, Canada. As we speak now, there is a rally taking place in Montreal. We will not stop, but let me tell you, this is not only Jewish people in the United States, this is not only Jewish people in Europe. We have still our indigenous Palestinian Jewish population in Jerusalem that condemn all what is happening now in Al-Aqsa. There is the anti-Zionist rabbinical court in Jerusalem that just released a statement a week ago condemning what is happening on Al-Aqsa. The same was issued a year ago by the Gaza war. And this exactly goes in the pattern already for decades since the first anti-Zionist rabbi in Jerusalem in the 1930s, Rabbi Yosef Chaim Zonnefeld, wrote a declaration to the Muslim Congress in Jerusalem. You need to listen to this. You can ignore the people out there. Listen to what we say because this is important. Free, 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 free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! a declaration to the Muslim Congress of Jerusalem with a very clear message that the Jewish people, we are talking about the indigenous Jewish population of Palestine, 
do not have any demand to any rights over our Aqsa. This is the Jewish position not from today. This is the Jewish position ever since we, since we lived together in Palestine, Muslims and Jews. And this is the way we prepare and we would like to see the future. We pray and we urge you all to share us in our prayer for the speedy dismantlement of this political state of Israel. We hope and we pray that this should stop peaceful with no more suffering to anyone involved. Inshallah, God willing. Ultimately, we pray for the glory of the Almighty to be revealed throughout the universe and all peoples together should recognize the kingdom of the one God and serve him in peace and harmony. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Aqsa, 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 Aqsa. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update of how many people at the pro-Israeli rally. Just a quick update. There's 30 people there at the rally. You 
you are connected and they're urgent and necessary to make. We know that only through solidarity can we unite and only by uniting can we win. I just want to speak for a moment about the appropriation that we see going on at the block over there with the so-called Jewish Lives Matter rally. I wanted to tell y'all just how much that upset me as someone who's been a participant in the Black Lives Matter movement over these past years, the past year and a half. There's such a long history of appropriation, such a long history of appropriation of our labor in this country. From the days that we were enslaved and literally built this country. You may think that these three words are just a small thing, but it is a part of that history. It is a part of all of that. It is a part of the violence that has been done to our people. Do you hear when we say Black Lives Matter, we're not saying that the lives of others don't matter. We're saying that the oppression, the specific oppression faced by our community, is also important for the liberation of other communities. That's why we're here to stand in solidarity with the people of Palestine. From Ferguson to Palestine, racist murder is a crime. From Ferguson to Palestine, racist murder is a crime. That's why we're here today. We understand those links. We know that the NYPD goes to Israel to get trained. They go to learn the most modern, the most high tech race of oppression. They go and learn it from what Israel is doing with Palestinians. And then they come back to our neighborhoods to do it against our people. Our liberation is tied up. We have to stay together. We're proud to be here with you today. Today we need to free Palestine. We need another intifada, another uprising for the people to be united and to fight together against our oppressors. Black people matter! Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Black lives matter! From Ferguson to Palestine, this is murder and crime.
As Filipinos, we know all too well that the stretches effects of the United States imperialist policies can have against third world people. Those same policies have led to the extrajudicial killings of 270 Filipinos in the current administration and have sanctioned the presence of the U.S. warship. The U.S. soldiers in the Philippine soil are the same imperial policies that are driving the force of the current death and destruction raining down in the people of Gaza. We refuse to accept the unfolding history of forces of the Palestinians that have descent lives uninterrupted by genocidal fascist imperialism. We refuse to accept another apartheid to subordinate treatment of economic, social, political, and civil rights of the Palestinians. We support Palestinians' right to fight for their liberation by any means necessary. The people have the right to rebel and take arms. From the Philippines to India to Palestine, armed struggle is the only way. Power to the Palestinian people, power to the all indigenous people fighting for their oppression, and long live international solidarity.
Next, I want to introduce my brother. He was seen in a picture when he was arrested wearing free Palestine on his t-shirt. And he also goes by the screen name Black Interpol. For too long, people of color have suffered at the hands of white people from Palestine to South Africa to America. The same oppression that oppresses Palestinians is here in America oppressing us. They kill us and don't give a fuck about us. from a family of Palestinian heroes. His brother, Ghassan Alashi, is the chairman of the Holy Land Foundation for Relief and Development. He's imprisoned by this government for 65 years because of his support for Palestinians under occupation. Osman himself was imprisoned, then stripped of his citizenship, and deported to the Gaza Strip. When I told him that I, we were having this event here today, he sent me a few words and asked me to read them to you. Israel occupied Palestine based on a false religious belief. They teach their children that God promised them the land of Palestine. They murdered residents of this land, uprooted villages and towns, and destroyed homes, hospitals, schools, and holy sites. Sadly though, when Palestinian youth resist this occupation and injustice, or when men and women resist Jewish extremists in occupied Palestine, the world's media refers to their resistance as acts of terrorism. They are, in fact, acts of self-defense. The Western media have double faces and double standards when it comes to Palestinian issues. They need to live among the Palestinians to realize that the Israelis can't live in peace even among themselves. The Western media need to stop their false propaganda and instead report the realities of Occupy Palestine. When you live the life of Palestinians, you will truly get to see the face of Israel. 
the face of Nazis. Occupation isn't right. Murdering children isn't right. Destroying homes isn't right. Holding 1.8 million people in a concentration camp isn't right. Disrespect of holy sites isn't right. The reality is, Israel's act of terrorizing non-Jews in Palestine is an act of self-destruction. History taught us that any nation created by false police beliefs will face destruction by its own hands. God will not allow injustice to continue, as it is written in the three holy books. The world is waking up to reality. Israel as an occupier, an occupation must have an end. It must end now. God bless humanity, and though we all end in peace. And my Arabic isn't great, so you're all going to have to help me out a lot with this chant. Barok, Bedam, Nabiki Yafalasim, Barok, Bedam, Nabiki Yafalasim, Barok, Bedam, Nabiki Yafalasim, Barok, Bedam, Nabiki Yafalasim, Barok, Bedam, Nabiki Yafalasim. I just want to make a small correction, Jeffrey Chan, we have moved Operation uh, Pillar of Defense in 2012, as well as the latest massacre of last year. Just a correction, when he was there to witness, the horrific events that occurred on our people, our brothers and sisters in Russia. One, two, three, four! Occupation no more! One, two, three, four! Occupation no more! Four, six, seven, eight! Smash the settlers on the state! Five, six, seven, eight! Smash the settlers on the state! One, two, three, four! Occupation no more! One, two, three, four! Occupation no more! We are leading 
the big colonial struggle, the global big colonial, colonial struggles against imperialism and colonization. Because, brothers and sisters, the liberation of Palestine, stabbing Israel, is the first step for global decolonization. The liberation of Palestine is the first step to empower the marginalized and oppressed. The liberation of Palestine is the first step for us to march together through the liberation of the whole world against the Western hegemony. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the so-called mayor of New York City, the Palacio, right now, while we are taken to the streets, is in Israel, sending support to Israel and speaking with our name to shame Palestinians and to stand with the terrorist state of Israel. The Palacio is not only dismissing us, it's not only dismissing the pro-Palestine community in New York City, he's relegating Palestinians, he's bringing them down to subhumans who don't deserve to be labeled as victims of the occupation. So we need to make it very clear that we are, as New Yorkers, as people from New Jersey and the United States, we are standing together against oppression, we are standing together with resistance, and we are standing together for the liberation of Palestine. Again, thank you so much for being here today. It's a pleasure seeing and an honor seeing these hundreds of people taken to the streets and hundreds in cold weather to stand up for Palestine. And in a few minutes, of course, ignore the Zionists in the south. In a few minutes, inshallah, we'll be marching from the heart of the Zionists. But before we march, let to remind you to share the hashtag New York in order for Palestine and keep up with our page New York for Palestine to stay up to date with the with the news and of course great thanks to UMP and Hydra, SGP and International Action Centre and all of our endorsers to get this together. And before I leave, I'd like to leave you. I mean, before I end, I'd like to leave you with a great, a great activist, a great intellectual in our community and in the U.S., a dear mentor and the chairman of American Muslims for Palestine, Professor Hadi Bazin. Alaikum. First, we need to give honor to the land that we're standing on. This land belongs to Native Americans. And as Palestinian, we can't begin speaking about occupied Palestine without recognizing and honoring the people that were killed and had genocide committed against them in this land. And it's only by honoring them and mentioning them that we begin to speak about Palestine. Also, we are here in New York, a place that had so much history about it. Just down the street in here, you had a graveyard that was filled with the slaves that built this country. And as Palestinians, we can't speak of Palestine without always centering the struggle of African Americans and those slaves that were brought to this country, not by their choice. And we need to remember that 10 to 20 percent of the slaves that were brought to America from West Africa were a Muslim background. So when we speak of Palestine, we have to say that Palestine represents every street, whether it's in America, Venezuela, South Africa, London, Paris, all the streets of Ramallah, Khalil, Nablus. There is, in every corner of the world, an oppressed people that see in Palestine a symbolic representation of their struggle. 
and make no mistake about it. In the 80s, we used to all call the South African flag. Many of us were five South Africans, but we understood that the freedom of South Africans represented that oppression that many people were feeling in different corners of the world. So today, the Palestinian flag is flying high because the Palestinian flag is flying high. And today, as we speak, there are demonstrations in San Francisco. There are demonstrations in Chicago. There are demonstrations in London. There are demonstrations in different parts of the Arab world. There are demonstrations in South Africa. We all recognize the basic understanding. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. They, they understand the centrality of free Palestine. Now, I often don't pay attention to what the Zionists say. Because the oppressor always going to construct the narrative that is rationalized their own oppression. But it's important for us to spend a few minutes. When they blame the Palestinians for being violent, as far as I know, Zionism itself as an enterprise was founded upon violence. Zionism as a play, as an organized, as an organized, uh, as an organized group, founded itself on violence. In 1948, they committed over 69 massacres, and this is the research that has been done by all history and others. Not only Dar Yassin, but two days ago we were commemorating the massacre of Kubla that was committed by Sharon. Rwanda has been accustomed throughout his history with violence. But more importantly, occupation is the highest form of violence. Occupation is the highest form of violence. It is violence against every single Palestinian. If you think about the apartheid rule, the apartheid rule is a violent structure that sits on top of the Palestinian body, not allowing it to breathe, not allowing it to move, not allowing it to have the basic human right of movement, which is a basic human right to be able to move. So don't speak about violence if the structure itself in Israel is rapidly violent toward the Palestinians. Now <laughs> let's speak about settlements. Now it's interesting that many of the settlers come from this area. New York has a large number of settlers that go in Palestine, express their racism, express their violence, confiscate land, taking property, cheating water, and making the Palestinian life a living hell. You can't speak about peace. Israel only understands the peace by stealing a piece of Palestinian land. That's what the meaning of peace for Israel has been. The promise that so-called Oslo, it gave the promise to the Palestinians of the possibility of being half pregnant. You never can be half pregnant. Either you are free or you are occupied. Either you are free or you are occupied. And Palestinians are occupied. They are not free. They are occupied. And, and the people under occupation has the international law to defend themselves. And they have the right to resist their occupier. They have the right to resist their occupier. Now in America and here, we have to speak our, about our responsibility. Every day, we give $10 million uh, to Israel. Every day, $10 million to Israel. 
your tax money and my tax money is going to support the atrocities that Israel committing on a daily basis. It is our moral and ethical responsibility to start funding Israel. It is our moral ethical responsibility to start funding Israel. That's what we have to do today. We have to bring an end to foreign aid to Israel today. Ending the occupation means ending and enabling the occupation. But we have to admit that we have a Congress that is occupied Congress. We have a Congress that responds to Netanyahu while he fights Obama. That is a serious problem that we have in this country. It is about time that we have a Congress that represents the people, that we have a Congress that represents our needs, that we have a Congress that gives more money for education than bonds, that we have a Congress that actually takes money and puts it in health care than sending it for bonds to kill Palestine. That's what we need to bring the change in this country. And so far, as we see Republicans and Democrats, the donkey and the elephant, both are committed to Zionism, and we need to change this. We need to change this. None of them is speaking the language that wants to bring wars to the Palestinians. We need to be more proactive. We need to be out in the streets day in and day out. We need to connect with everyone. We need to connect with Black Lives Matter. We need to say ending jail and opening the jail so we get our people out of the jail. We need to connect up with the Latino, with the Latino community and stop calling for building the, building the walls in the border. We need to tear down the walls on the border of Mexico and the Palestine. down deep in our guts that there's so much corruption, that there's so much, so much violence that is being committed, so much dehumanization, and it's up to us to make a movement that will bring a change in this place, in this country, and across the world. That's what is needed. That's what took place in, during the 1960s. This is the period that we need to reignite what took place in the 1960s. If you remember, Martin Luther King was the only fighter for civil rights. But in 1967, he took on transnationally and understood the link between domestic civil rights and international human rights. And he gave his speech in the Riverside Church when he said that silence is betrayal because up to that point, he was silent on Vietnam. At the time that he spoke on Vietnam, 77% of the American public was against Martin Luther King. In 1967, 77% of the American public were against Martin Luther King. Today, Martin Luther King is the hero and all these said against him. on the doors of the schools are in the dustbin of history. And today, we will say that we are on the right side of history. Netanyahu yeah. is the wrong side of history. Congress is the wrong side of history. The U.S. government is the wrong side of history. And change is coming. Palestine is free. Not will be free. Palestine is free. It's a has to be actualized. Palestine is free and it will become free in actuality. Salaam alaikum.
collective. And all of these struggles are a cause of imperialism, colonialism, white supremacy. And we need to be fighting for all of these struggles alongside the struggle for Palestine. A lot of my comrades are going out in the audience and they're giving out flyers about students for just NYCSJP. Please get involved. If you're interested, contact one of us. I promise you that the youth today are going to free Palestine. We are going to free Okay, so they'll follow the truck. They'll follow the truck. Okay, yeah. Okay. Then lift the, the, the big flags in the truck. Where's the flag?
four sacks last war.
Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free ولا 
سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. Again, the buses for New Jersey, uh, both Patterson and North Bergen, will be here in about 10 minutes at the same corner. So, uh, hang in there. They'll be here. Yeah, don't move anywhere. Oh! 